Okay, we only have about six people so far. To uh, go over some of these. So, am I sharing my screen? No, let me share. No. Presenter tab. Let's present this tab. Nope, this tab. Okay, so arid environments are dry and lacking in life in living organisms, while human environments are wet and have many organisms. And yes, organisms are actually very important here, especially plants, because they're going to hold back uh, the rainwater in the sediment and keep everything from washing away. Uh, Christian said that arid landscapes are dry, steep slopes, more defined shapes. That's true. Little vegetation. Human landscapes are wet. Much vegetation. Rounded off shapes. Awesome. Couldn't have said it better myself. Nice, Marie. Arid is dry. Okay. Mm. I'd like to continue, but um, we do have to move on. So just a, some quick review. Remember, arid environments or dry climate, little vegetation. That little vegetation, if it is there, can prevent erosion. But generally speaking, hills are steep and sharp. Streams dry up at times. And that's what it looks like. Humid environments, heavy vegetation, rounded hills, streams have discharge all year long. Kind of looks like this. Some bedrock is more resistant uh, to erosion than others, so they're going to be hanging around. A quick review. Weathering, you know, involves the breaking down of rocks, and uh, both processes occur in place. So it's just breaking down. It's not moving. There's absolutely no movement. Next. Compared to erosion, erosion is actually when uh, those broken down pieces are being taken away or moved away by either wind, water, ice, or glacier, or even gravity. These are called agents of erosion. So weathering makes a mess. Erosion cleans it up. So quick check for understanding. Blank is the movement of sediment from one place to another. Is it erosion or weathering? Select your answer. Let's see, they did it. All right. All right. So. Eh. Whoa. We All just right. did this. So the movement is the erosion, and the breakdown is weather. Oh, and there we go. <laughs> hey, look, you learned. No, no, whoever did that. You're not sure. I'm still not sure. Okay, moving on. So today's new material is drainage patterns. Uh, so our first one is known as dendritic. Now, we find this on flattish, relatively flat rock. Um, so when there's little pitch, there's little emphasis for the water to go rushing away in one direction. So you end up getting it all kind of piling up together, and then it moves away in one river. We find this a lot in areas like plains. Tributaries are the names of the smaller rivers that all together build up into the larger river. All right, then we have another uh, drainage pattern called a trellis. And this is when the river flows across folded or faulted rock areas, uh, which has varied resistance. So it looks pretty much like pictured here, almost like, I don't know, maybe like tree branches. Or, branches, or, or Miss G, would you say like roses on a trellis? Okay, fine. So for those of you that don't know, <laughs> a trellis is just a structure that you build that you can grow plants on. So it kind of kind of looks like that. That's why we call it it. Um, the base of the river here is coming out of the ground, essentially, and then it moves side to side like flowers would. Now, in reality, that's not what's happening. Water rains down on these peaks, flows down those channels, and builds up in that middle river. So it rains here, and it falls to the middle. And another way to take a look at it is like this. Right. So you can see as it rains, everything kind of piles up to the lowest here because water always wants to go to the lowest point. And then eventually it seeks its lowest point, which would be in between the folds and hills. Then we have our radial pattern, which occurs in a domed area. So picture a hill and you're looking at it from above. It pretty much has that like 
I don't know, maybe like a spider web effect of yeah, starburst, however you want to call it. Uh, I always think of it as like radial as in like radial tires for your car. They have the metal bands that go around the outside. Uh, radius, you know, from one side to the other. Uh, so here's Mount Rainier. Now, this obviously is not covered with rivers. It's covered with glaciers, but it's still making that radial pattern as it moves out from the center. Horse Mountain, same deal. Water is going down and away from the top of the mountain to the bottom. And then we have um, one that is less common, especially here on the eastern seaboard. But if you ever have domed rock, rock that got pushed up, right? So if rock gets pushed up, it kind of breaks the surface. Uh, I guess an analogy could be like if you've ever baked like brownies or cupcakes or something, especially with cupcakes, the middle part might rise more than the outside. And then it kind of like makes like cracks, right? And ridges. Well, it's kind of the same thing here. If you have a, a hill that was pushed up, and the bedrock surrounding it is weaker, that weaker bedrock will erode away and it'll make these like semicircular rivers. It's kind of like um, a bullseye almost. Now, if you look at the word annular, I believe in Latin, annular means around the outside of something. Well, that's kind of what we're looking at here. Now, you get a chance to draw. I want you to take a look at the image below what might make the drainage pattern uh well, how did i write this look at the image below what might the drainage pattern look like i'm just reading it wrong so we've got a mountain and i gave you some examples on the bottom left sketch out what you think the drainage pattern might look like okay let's take a look at what some people drew all right so this person drew dendritic not not correct Another dendritic. Okay, cool. So this one's more of a radial. You can see how it's coming down the sides. Now, um, you want to just make sure that these rivers are all pointing down the hill, right? This one's kind of dendritic. I'm not sure what's going on here. Hey, Miss G, radial. Very good, whoever drew this one. All right, we're gonna practice these more. So just know that um, radial is when we have a, a sharp mountain that's pointed up. All right, so here's another example. Top of the mountain and everything just flows downwards. Wow. So look at the image below and what pattern do you think we might find here? Do the same thing. I'm going to draw the pattern in the space provided. And don't forget to put your name. We want to know who drew it. And again, pretty flat for this one. Uh, rectangular, annular, radial trellis. Um, now, some of these we don't really talk about in this class. Um, like centripetal, we don't really, or pinnate. We, no, but for the most part, I do need you to be aware of dendritic, and that's relatively flat surfaces. Um, sometimes they show you rectangular, that's with broken up bedrock. Um, annular, we said that that's when the bedrock has a dome and it kind of rolls around it. Radial, radial is when it rolls down the side of a mountain. And then trellis, trellis is when you have those rolling hills. That's basically it. So um, what you're going to do, before we get to the exit slip, I do want to point your attention here. So you do have a copy of today's notes in case you have to go back, which I feel like some of you might have to. Uh, but we have our assignment for today, which is an Ed Puzzle. So the Ed Puzzle is only a short three minutes long. Uh, but they're all, or for the most part, they are open-ended responses. I want to see uh, what you pull out of this. The uh, person that created this video did a good job of illustrating the different types, and I, I think this will be helpful. All right. But before we leave, I do want you to try and answer our exit slip. How does the topography of the land determine the direction of water flow? How does the shape 
of the land determine the direction of water flow.